Hong Kong-based entrepreneur Ben Chang is packing up. The plan is some designers, developer, relocate later this year. His company, Our Sky, has created apps for major finance and fashion companies around the world. This is a product we developed. It is a stylus for iPad. Like the vast majority of companies in Hong Kong, Chang says the city's quality of life, widespread use of English, and business-friendly regulations have created the ideal place to build his business. In the past decade, Our Sky has grown from just three developers to more than 60 employees. This is one of our client's product. It is tracking my face, and then if I move, the camera moves with me. But now he says a sweeping national security law that was passed after a year of pro-democracy protests is threatening his business. It broadly criminalizes secession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion with foreign governments with up to life in prison. And the new law is pushing companies like Chang's to reconsider their future in the city. Singapore, Taipei, and Tokyo, we do consider like different cities. In August, a poll by the American Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong found that 39% of its members who were surveyed said they have plans to move capital, assets, or operations out of the city because of the national security law. Several countries in the region are making moves to sway businesses in Hong Kong. So what can these places offer companies like Chang's and which will he choose? What you need to do from a site selection perspective is you need to look at, first of all, what are those factors, uh, both critical and important, that drive the success of a business. For nearly 30 years, John Evans and his firm Tractus Asia have been advising companies like Kellogg's, Boeing and MetLife where to set up offices in the region. He says the most important factor companies have historically looked at first is the cost of operating in a city, which includes real estate, salaries, and utilities. Companies have gravitated to Hong Kong or Singapore because of corporate taxes which are far lower than Australia and Japan. Next up, the city's connectivity to other places. This is everything from how easy it is to get to the airport to how long you have to sit on a plane until you meet your client. Before the pandemic, airports in Seoul and Hong Kong had the most number of destinations, with Singapore, Tokyo, and Taipei not far behind. Companies need to be able to rely on an independent and efficient legal system. So if they ever go to court, they can be assured that they'll be given a fair trial. South Korea and Japan are often held up as Asian democracies with effective judiciaries. And finally, an increasingly important factor is risk. The Fukushima nuclear disaster. That's when C-suites started to think about risk more importantly. Then with the rising costs of China and then the U.S.-China trade war, followed very closely by COVID, risk has really become, I think, that important factor. Evan says Hong Kong's national security law chips away at the city's rule of law and increases the political risk companies can face. And that's a cost Ben Chang says his company can't afford. We start getting some letter from the legal department of our clients uh, asking about like where our data store, the recent national security law, make them worry about if they should continue using our service. For some clients, Chang has had to comply with strict European Union data protection and privacy regulations. But now he says he could be held liable for violating those if Hong Kong police use the national security law during an investigation to collect data or order it deleted online. This law will not undermine human rights and freedoms. The Hong Kong government has said the law won't affect people's basic freedoms and that only time and facts will tell that the law will not undermine human rights. But Chang says this promise doesn't reassure him and realizes he can't store his clients' data in Hong Kong and guarantee them that it will be safe. So he's chosen to move part of his staff out of the city. His decision is based on two factors, being in a democratic country where he can guarantee the protection of his clients' data, and a city with a good quality of life so he can attract talent. The immediate thing we are going to do is to set up a new office in UK, uh, London, especially for storing data for our Western clients. And also we will have office in both Taipei and in Japan. These two locations are just very popular, so to retain our talent, we have to open office there. There is one wild card that Chang and other companies could consider. In a bid to lure businesses, countries in the region are planning special incentives. Japan is discussing plans to make it easier for people in finance to get visas. Taiwan opened a dedicated government office to help companies move. 
and one Australian lawmaker is pushing to lower the corporate tax rate. Your location decision should never be driven by incentives, be they tax or non-tax incentives. Incentives are the, the icing on the cake. It's the sweetener that allows you to make a decision. So which cities have John Evans' clients inquired about the most recently? If China is the market you're pursuing, you might as well set up in a place like Shanghai. If you're concerned about risks that come with doing business in China, then Singapore by far is the easiest and most effective location to quickly relocate out of Hong Kong. For now, only a handful of companies have publicly announced their Hong Kong departure. The New York Times said it would move part of its staff to Seoul because the national security law has created uncertainty about the newspaper's operations and noted difficulties obtaining visas for some Hong Kong-based staffers. While South Korean tech company Naver announced it had moved its data backup center to Singapore, according to a statement provided to local media. Ben Chang says it's just a matter of time before other businesses follow their lead out of Hong Kong. We used to have an advantage here in Hong Kong. We are in the middle of East and West. So a lot of companies setting up office here would enjoy both the culture of the Western market. At the same time, they can also go into China. But now people realize that they have to rethink Hong Kong in the future.